Hello, friends of Blender, Ancient Greece and learning cool stuff. Welcome to this third part of the short film asset course, where we'll have a look at how to sculpt our model. In the previous parts, we modeled the asset and added some particles. So if you're new to this series, consider having a look at the first two chapters. Now, however, let's not waste time and get to it. All right, time to get sculpting. Before we begin, however, it's always a good idea to duplicate your finished model in our case this pedestal main mesh and have it as a backup. Name it something like BUP and then select the origin model and hit shift H. This will hide all our geometry. With this model we want to apply all our modifiers and then jump straight into the sculpting mode which you of course do by hitting Control tab and then either clicking on this icon or hitting 2. Now this is not intended as an introduction to sculpting in Blender, that would take a whole course. However, I want to show you a simple way of sculpting engravings and surface details onto this mesh. First thing I always do before sculpting is setting a proper resolution for my dynamic topology. I choose the clay stripes brush here, set its strength to something very low in order to just add a resolution and not change the shape of my geometry. Then I check the dynamic topology button here to activate the high resolution sculpting mode. Don't worry about this pop-up, just hit OK. In the dynamic topology menu I specify the size to something small like 5 pixels. Make sure that I have subdivide edges selected as well as relative detail. Now jump into the wireframe mode to get a better idea of what's happening here. Then just brush over your geometry with a bigger brush. By the way, you adjust the size of your brush by hitting F and dragging your mouse. After you go around the model and fill it with detail, making sure to check it from all sides, we are almost ready to begin sculpting. By the way, there are of course other ways to fill your object with detail, but somehow I find this the most reliable. You can always make sure that your detail is propagated properly or even just on the places you want it to. Now switch back to subdivide collapse, add strength to the clay strips brush and let's do some quick masking. Focus the camera on one side of the pedestal, it's also better to activate this orthographic mode here. Before we start let's check that we have the mirroring option deactivated. To mask out the area where we want to sculpt, choose this masking tool here and then quickly fill out this plane. To get rid of the overlaps, just hit B and drag with your middle mouse button to get rid of the unneeded selection. It's like selecting objects, only you're selecting and deselecting the dynotopo geometry. Cut off all four sides and go to this mask menu here and click on invert mask or you can simply hit Ctrl I. With that we have created a border for where we want our sculpting to have effect. Everything that's black can't be sculpted on. Ok now select your clay strips brush, you can try it out and hit Ctrl Z anytime to remove your previous stroke. By the way be sure to never undo in the object mode, this way you can delete your whole sculpting process. To remove just single sculpting strokes always Ctrl Z in the sculpt mode. And now it's just about selectively using several brushes, looking at the reference images you surely have displayed on your second monitor and trying to reach the shape of the sculptures you've chosen. So for the basic sculpting use clay strips. This is a much better brush for these sorts of engravings because as opposed to the regular sculpt draw brush it actually adds new geometry. As you can see I'm using the brush strength of 0.78 for this and 5 pixels resolution as we've already set up. With a small brush I start adding my first strokes. Try not to be like me and freak out at this phase. Every time I do this I realize just how much more I need to learn anatomy, human proportions and all the stuff that artists need to know. Really I always get very depressed every time I start thinking too much at this point. So guys, don't think. Just play some nice music, sip some tea or coffee, sculpt away and try to enjoy the process. And also know that we all suck. I mean, even people who are really really good think they suck. My advice? Embrace the suck. Every time you mess something up, just Ctrl Z to undo or hold down Shift and smooth the area. 
To adjust the overall proportions of your sculpting, you can activate this grab brush here. Use F to make it really big and then gently push some areas as you can see me doing here. Then just jump back to the clay strips brush and sculpt away. Don't be afraid to smooth out your work aggressively. Push and pull different parts of the sculpture and completely re-sculpt them. It's all part of the process. Keep adding layers of detail and your figures will slowly start to emerge. Also you can hold down control to invert your clay strips brush and instead of adding geometry, subtract it making creases and recesses. Hmm. One would say that people in the 21st century will be better at this art thing than someone from 6th century BC. I mean, in two and a half thousand years we could have developed some intuition for this. Something that would maybe help us feel the proportions better, right? But no! The old Greeks were the real masters. They could make this in stone. I have my Wacom here. But I still suck. Oh well. Enough whining, Martin. And back to the tutorial. You can use the scrape tool here, holding down your mouse over the smooth button and finding it in the menu. With it, you can scrape it all away and start anew. Continue brushing with the clay strips and you can always use the grab brush even with a smaller size to adjust small shapes. Be sure to remember that with the dynamic topology settings set to relative and subdivide edges, the closer you zoom to the geometry, the finer detail you get with your brush. To get even better resolution, lower the detail size in your dynamic topology settings, for example to 3 or 2. However, watch out, this might slow down your computer. Once you start being a little bit more satisfied with your achieved shape, you can start using the crease tool. That enables you to make small recesses, defining your shape a bit more on the edges. One brush that I haven't showed you yet is this pinch brush, which you can find when holding down the crease brush button. It basically helps you bring neighboring pixels together and pinch them closer, which is very useful for finishing shapes you're happy with. All that follows is just a repetition of what I've already showed you. Just look at your reference, try to follow the shapes, proportions, the structure of the muscles and limbs and do your best to recreate it. Use clay strips brush to add new sculpting geometry or holding down control to create recesses. Smooth out your sculpted shapes by holding down shift and if need be push them around with the grab brush. Then when you're happy with the shapes try to polish them by adding creases with the crease brush and pinching them together with the pinch brush. I will upload a video with the full real-time sculpting process on the heroesofbronze.com website so if you want, the link is in the description. To create the grapes down here, you can use a brush called Blob, which does just that. Set the strength to 1 and then get clicking. Once that's done, start with polishing the sculpt. It's again just repeating the same process, only with smaller brush, getting closer to the sculpture. One thing I didn't mention is that you can use the scrape brush to flatten some areas that are too uneven or are bulging too much. It's important to remember, however, what your ultimate goal is. For me, it's making my short film. I don't want to spend the entire day of my spare time sculpting this particular pedestal, especially since the sculptures won't really be that visible in the shot I'm planning and they most certainly won't be the focus of it. That's why it's not necessary to go overboard with the details. In a studio environment, where your single task would be to make this pedestal as perfect as possible, you would spend a lot longer on an asset like this. In my case though, there needs to be a line where I have to stop working on this and move on. In my case, the line is here. 
And even though this sculpture is far from perfect, it will work in the shot. And that's all that matters to me. So always think about what sort of asset you're making and what purpose it's serving. All right, now to quickly repeat the process, first go to the orthographic mode if you're not already in it. Rotate your camera that it's facing directly the side of the pedestal you want to sculpt on. Then using the mask tool and hitting B for rectangular selection, mask out all the areas you don't want to sculpt on. Use the same dynamic topology settings as before, which means relative details, subdivide edges and some small number like 5 pixels to start things off. And then using the clay strips brush, get sculpting. Start again with the general shapes, use your reference images and worry mainly about proportions at first. Embrace the suck and try to arrive at the shape that you like. Use clay strips for the general sculpting. Holding down control while using it will result in creating recesses instead of adding geometry. If your whole proportions of the sculpt are wrong, use a really big grab brush. Smooth often and then add sculpted details again and don't be afraid to get rid of your sculpts by using the scrape brush. If you zoom in to the object your sculpted detail will be finer. You can also add resolution to your brush by setting some lower pixel value in the dynamic topology settings, something like 3 or 2. If you then want to polish the edges of your sculpt use the crease brush to add little indentations and then pinch brush to tighten the edges of the sculpt. Continue like that and you'll have the rest of your sculptures ready in no time. After you finish your sculptures, let's also not forget to add some sculpted details to the whole pedestal. To start the process, let's start by adding more resolution to our mesh. Change the strength of the clay strips brush to zero to avoid distorting our geometry. And then activate dynamic topology again with a resolution of 5 and click on the mesh. This should add the resolution we need, just check if it's on all sides. Due to the bevel modifier we applied and the fact that in this area there were three edges close to each other, we have these fragments here, little indentions where the geometry was the most dense. Let's just focus on smoothing some of these areas, holding down shift and brushing over them. Be careful not to have symmetry option activated, if so disable it here, because we are now aiming at irregularity in the detail. You can bring the smooth edges back together by using pinch brush. It will also help if you activate the smooth stroke option here, set it to something like 75 and a factor of 0 0.9. And now you can see that when you drag your brush it does not sculpt immediately, instead you have to drag it a while for it to take effect. It allows you to draw these smooth straight lines or definitely straighter than when drawn by hand. So let's use that here to tighten the edges we smooth a tad too much. You just have to watch out to actually stick to the edges and do not destroy them completely. There's a lot of methods to add damage to your model. One of my favorite ways to add these details is for example to use the scrape brush. You can either use it just as it is, brushing over the edges of the model, However, to create sharper cuts and destroyed parts, it's a good idea to go into the brush settings here and set the sculpt plane to view plane and also lock it. This will create flattened areas based on the angle from which you are viewing the surface. Basically you are flattening any geometry from the spot you are looking at it. Just rotate your camera from below of the model and start gently sculpting on the edges. You will soon realize what this setting is doing. This works really great for cutting away sharp areas to create damaged areas on stone or even metal objects. It takes some getting used to, but you'll do well to remember this technique. It's really super useful. This way you can just quickly rotate around your object and add various scratches and chip away parts. 
However, be careful with it, it can cut away big chunks of geometry if you're not careful, like here. When I'm happy with the result, I can detail the other two objects in the same way. Unhide the smaller pedestal and of course don't forget to create a backup copy of it. This should become a habit each time you are starting the sculpting process. Add the resolution we need by clicking on the model a few times with the clay strips brush set to zero and with the dynamic topology active. While we are at it, another habit you might want to learn is to always check if the dynamic topology is active. It actually deactivates every time you go back to the object mode. Check the amount of detail in the wireframe mode and yep, this seems fine. Now let's start tightening the edges by again using the pinch brush with the smoothness activated. You can make the radius bigger, for example over 100, to get even smoother result. Polish the edges of the geometry and then start damaging them the same way we did with the main pedestal using the scrape brush with the locked view plane. Carefully brush on various spots, chipping away at the corners where the object is most likely to get damaged. I went in and finished the process for the pedestal bowl using the very same techniques I already showed you several times, mostly just using the scrape brush. And with that, we have successfully finished the sculpting of our asset, adding various details and engravings to it. In the next chapter, we'll have a look at how we can UV the pedestal in order to bring it into the Substance Painter for the texturing process. So I hope you like this part and see you next time. Also my friends, if you liked this video, consider subscribing to my channel or check the website of my project heroesofbronze.com, which one day will evolve into a short film. Until next time, Martin out.